Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John. This is Many a True Nerd, and this is Fallout New Vegas No Kill Run. I absolutely love uh, Fallout New Vegas. It is quite possibly my favourite game of all time. And probably the single most important reason why it makes it up there is because, especially versus its predecessor, Fallout 3 is because this is a game that truly more than any other that I've ever played uh, gives you a huge amount of flexibility to play the game exactly as you want. Fallout New Vegas was one of those rare games that actually did say if you want to be, you can be a complete pacifist. If you don't want to specialise in weapons, if you want to talk your way around your problems, you can just uh, use knowledge and charisma and what have you just to figure out ways around your problems. So. I massively respected the game for doing that, and I really want to. I want to show that off. So this is why I want to do a no kill run of uh, Fallout New Vegas. Oh, here we are. Okay, I've been shot in the face, but I'm okay. I got better, and I've decided that uh, I am role playing a character who, having been shot in the face at point blank range, but who miraculously managed to survive that, I have now been left with a crippling uh, aversion to violence or conflict of any description, and thus I have now completely sworn off ending another, ending anyone else's life. I have a newfound respect for the sanctity of life, so I won't be killing anyone whatsoever. That's, uh, that's the story of this character, and that's what I will be sticking to. This character's name is John, because why not? How'd I do? Well, you've made me the wrong gender for a start. Yep, we'll definitely be playing this game uh, as female. The reason for that is because the female-specific perks are going to be uh, down the line a lot more useful to us than the male-specific perks. And yes, this is a female called John because I've decided that uh, some of the bullet going through my brain may have done some damage, so I'm totally fine with this. But I am going to change the hair to my personal favourite hairstyle, the blast back. Oh burn, that'll do. I think that's quite nice. In all events, we'll basically never be seeing this face again because we'll be spending a lot of time either looking directly through her eyes or at the back of her head. So, more important to verify that looks good. Yep, I think that looks fine. I love Doc Mitchell. Doc Mitchell's a great character. I love his moustache. It's absolutely epic. It's probably the most epic moustache in the entire game. I find sometimes I'd, I really wish I would I feel like at one point I want to do a... Uh, a New Vegas run where I perfectly recreate Doc Mitchell in the character creator and call my character Doc Mitchell, then immediately murder Doc Mitchell and simply replace him. Okay, so the character build that I will be going with, uh, I'll just quickly go through uh, my decision making process uh, for this. So, uh, strength is really, really not that important to me at all. Uh, I do want some carry weight, but obviously um, I won't be carrying around um, any guns as standard, and also because I will barely be killing anyone, uh, for the most part I won't actually uh, be carrying around much stuff at all, because I won't be carrying around much loot that I need to trade in. Perception is somewhat useful, because spotting enemies and lock picking uh, will still be good, so I'll pop that up just a tiny bit, and I may increase that a little bit yet. Endurance is extremely important because uh, there will be a large number of occasions where I will just be running through enemy fire and just trying to outlast them. Charisma I'm going to absolutely sink to nothing uh, for the simple reason that companion nerve is not really relevant to this run. Even when I do have companions with me I've never noticed a problem with their nerve. I've never known them to run off or refuse to work with me so uh, whatever. So that just leaves barter and speech, uh, but I can just raise those with the very large number of skill points which I'll be getting through pushing intelligence up, which as a bonus also gives me high uh, science and medicine and repair, all of which I will be using. Repair less so, but uh, science and medicine will be very useful. Agility is a really, really interesting one uh, because speed is obviously uh, useful uh, in a lot of ways. Um, Sneak is useful in a lot of ways. Action point regeneration won't really be coming into this. I might just put one in just because I may as well take the sneak. And it might I might need it for an emergency. There might be instances where I need to do some uh, some VATS work. So, And then I'm just going to put luck up to 7 because that gives me a general increase in stats across the board. Uh, plus I like the idea of luck being at 7. It seems, you know, kind of appropriate. I strongly agree with everything. 
Okay, I've decided I don't like the results you've given me, and so I'm going to give you different results. The skills that I'm going to be prioritising are going to be speech, which is going to be the main way I'm going to be avoiding an awful lot of conflict uh, in this game, so that's very, very important. Lockpick is also pretty important. I'm going to have to do a lot of sneaking around things, uh, so I need lockpick to be at least 25 pretty early on in the game. Uh, so that's a pretty important one. Meanwhile, medicine, I'm gonna also going to put straight up. Uh, and the reason that medicine is going to be straight up is because I am going to be injecting myself with a lot of drugs to keep myself going. I could go for sneak, but I'm hoping to play the game a bit faster than that anyway. Okay, and for all my bonus perks, obviously good natured is a given because I won't be using any of the five skills that I'm losing uh, five skill points from, but... Uh, barter, medicine, repair, science and speech will all be very very important to me uh, going forward so that is absolutely yeah that's just um, that's just a given. Four eyes I do normally go for anyway just because I will pretty much always be wearing glasses you can find a pair of glasses uh, right in Doc Mitchell's house straight away uh, which is good and yeah it's basically just a free point of perception so I'm just going to take that and now as is almost tradition I'm just going to ransack Doc Mitchell's house because he doesn't seem to mind whatsoever. Two most important things in here uh, make some stim packs from the chemistry uh, kit and repair the gun uh, repair the submachine gun and that is purely because you are going to sell it because it's actually the single most valuable thing in here. Today's physician is worth taking as is of course there's the reading glasses on the desk so put those straight on. Ooh, found some clothes already. Let's see if I like these clothes. I do like to, uh, I do always want to try and make sure I'm actually kind of wearing something uh, acceptable. Oh, that's awful. That's absolutely awful. Right, no. And always remember to ransack his fridge and oven because there's actually some quite valuable things in there. Okay, so here we are in Good Springs. Now I'm just going to quickly uh, scavenge around Good Springs uh, to try and get some slightly better clothing because I really don't like the uh, the jumpsuit. Uh, while I'm doing that, I might also you know, just steal a couple of things that I might need, uh, just focusing on stim packs. Uh, I'll quickly kind of go over um, the version. I'm just going to quickly explain uh, the version that I'm using here. I am playing on hard mode. I am also playing, uh, but not on hardcore mode. And the reason I'm not playing on hardcore mode is because I don't think it makes the game better or more fun. I think it just makes the game uh, a lot more annoying. Uh, I'm playing on hard mode rather than very hard mode. It's, that's the mode I normally play on. I think it's kind of the best balance between uh, fun and interesting and, uh, and difficult. I have completed this game on very hard mode before. I'm not going to do it here because while I think it is completely doable... I just think the amount of damage that you'll be taking, given you'll be very regularly underleveled and without kind of very good armor, it'll just make it not particularly fun, uh, as less fun to watch. I'll be spending a lot of time in menus just injecting myself uh, with stim packs. Uh, I am playing the Xbox 360 Ultimate Edition, uh, though I have uninstalled Courier Stash, and the reason is I don't particularly like having about. 50 or so items in my inventory uh, from the very beginning of the game that I don't want I consider I've been given too early and that I think actually do damage to the uh, to the game balance so uh, that's the thing fun thing about this house here actually I'm about to go into I thought for uh, so many playthroughs of this game that this house because everything you weren't stealing any of it uh, you were everything was just marked as yellow rather than red I assume, therefore, that this house was just free and was just kind of yours uh, in the same way that you get the house in uh, Megaton extremely early in Fallout 3. No, it was only quite a while later when I came to rest in this house and woke up next to Easy Pete that I discovered it's his house. And that um, he was called Easy Pete because he has a very lax notion of property ownership and also because he doesn't really object or even mention the fact that he's... Uh, been sharing a bed with me on and off for uh, for quite a few years at this point. So uh, there you go. That was uh, that that was an interesting revelation. So now I don't sleep there anymore. Now I sleep in the uh, on the mattress in the trailer around the back of the general store instead. I'll also briefly explain uh, why it is exactly uh, that I am doing this run. 
And obviously it is partly born out of the fact that I just I really want to show off just what a flexible, interesting game uh, Fallout New Vegas can be if you actually uh, allow yourself to play by all sorts of interesting different rules. It's also because I did actually try and look up a kind of an, a good no-kill run uh, on the internet. I didn't really find anything inspiring. What I did find on quite a few occasions was people saying, yeah, I've done a no-kill run of Fallout New Vegas. It was really easy because you just need to get uh, Boone and Rex and they'll just slaughter everything. So you don't need to kill anything, which strikes me as the most horrendous cheating imaginable uh, to kind of try and pretend that uh, taking a trained uh, military sniper around with you and uh, just sicking him on anyone that looks at you funny uh, means that it's a no-kill run. So here's the thing about money in this game. Uh, in a normal game of Fallout New Vegas you have an awful lot of money and you get an awful lot of your money uh, from uh, looting a large number of people that you kill. In this game obviously you're actually very short on money uh, quite a lot of the time versus a normal game because obviously you're not picking uh, guns and armour of corpses anywhere near as much, uh, which can be a problem. Um, what you do, however, get is a large number of ammo that you can just find lying around. You can just sell all of that, which partly compensates for it. So you're not uh, too impoverished. Lack of money is not your biggest problem. What your biggest problem more often is, is that you're incredibly underleveled because you get so much of your experience from killing people. So here's Sunny. Cheyenne, stay. It's just down to the southeast of short ways. Okay, sure. So, while we run uh, down there, I am going to... Uh, I'm just going to quickly go through the rules. So, play the rules video! Rule number one! No murdering people! Number two! No killing creatures! And that includes abominations, super mutants, and anything else that is manifestly alive. Number three, no killing robots. There's just too much chance they might actually be sentient AIs. Number four, companion kills count as your kills. You are morally accountable for everything that your companions do. Your companions, therefore, like you, are not allowed to kill humans, animals, or robots. Number five, no yes man run. We are going to be doing the NCR missions and on top of that we're going to be doing as many missions as we can do full stop. So those are the rules but uh, I'm actually you're probably wondering why am I coming with uh, Sunny Smiles given that she is about to go murdering some geckos and invite me to help out doing that. Uh, so two important clarifications that I'm going to uh, go over, which I think this mission uh, demonstrates very, very nicely. Um, firstly, I'm considering an important differentiation between a companion and someone who is, uh, and someone who's actually invited me to come with them. So, okay. if I have actually, uh, if I've invited someone to come and do something with me, then I consider them a companion and I'm morally accountable for their actions. In the event of Sunny Smiles, where she's just going to go and do something and I've offered to tag along, um, I am not morally accountable for what she chooses to do now, as long as I do not actively kill anything. So I kind of feel like, you know, I'm not really here to help kill the geckos, I'm more here to see if I can talk her out of killing geckos and if we can just all live in peace. Uh, which might not work, but, uh, but what have you. So, unfortunately I kind of feel like I'm feeling a bit of peer pressure here, because she's looking at me and so's her dog. So, I'm kind of gonna, I'm gonna go out, but I'm gonna deliberately, I'm gonna deliberately miss. Oh, oh no, I've, oh I've missed, oh I've missed repeatedly. Oh, this is, oh this is terrible. Oh no, I've missed the geckos. And now I'm gonna run away from the geckos. Now I'm gonna run away from the geckos. No, Sunny, don't do it. Sunny, no. Sunny, be friends, be friends. We're, we're all God's creatures together, Sunny. No, Sonny! Oh, I, I, oh, I can't bear to look. Oh, 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 I think I'm gonna be sick. Oh, this is awful. Oh, this is terrible. That's not gonna stop me looting the corpses, by the way. I, I'm, I'm still gonna do that. See? You're getting the hang of it. I think that's a generous appraisal of how that just went, Sonny. You want? And after these geckos die, we'll be adding a second important caveat to the rules. Uh, which I'll be calling the Shepherd Book Loophole, which is that the Bible is very fuzzy on the topic of kneecaps. 
So there will be multiple instances in this game uh, where even though I won't be killing anything, I will actually have to fire a weapon and injure people in various ways that uh, make the outcome uh, suit how I want it to end up. So in this case, I won't be killing any of these geckos, but I will be helping to make sure that this woman actually survives by weakening them in such a way as she can kill them. And one more shot. Hopefully this doesn't get a critical. Yes, she gets the kill, not me. So now that woman survives. So now that woman survives, and we can verify that, that I have not broken any rules by going to no people killed, no creatures killed. This is obviously in the... Uh, somewhat in the letter of the letter rather than the spirit of the law. However, uh, I wanted to do this primarily just to demonstrate that uh, it's going to be something I'm going to have to do uh, at various points later in the game. There will be literally no alternative but to do this if I'm going to complete large portions of this game, especially if I'm not going down the yes man route. There are, uh, in order to avoid killing anyone, uh, and come up with the best ending and complete a large number of missions, there are going to have to be times when I'm going to have to injure certain people in order to nudge events to a particular conclusion. Uh, and this is one of those, this is an example of those times. Sure, right. why not? I'll do that. Think. So, just need to do this quick mission for Sunny. Because, and I need to do this really uh, primarily because... You are desperately underleveled for most of a no-kill run. You absolutely have to do every quest that you can do because uh, the thing about um, avoiding conflict is it often requires you to have very high skills uh, in speech or science or medicine or, uh, or various other things. That's being balanced against the fact that for large parts of the game, you're actually... Um, very much under leveled because you're not getting the experience points from killing people. So I got a shovel from the store earlier so now I'm going to do some speed grave robbing which is totally fine and uh, because it's not murder I'm gonna get the snow globe because it's very valuable and that is pretty important. Uh, the money that I'm gonna get off that is very very useful and I'm not gonna go for the grave down there. Ooh, 21 bottle caps I'll take that. And now back into town, back into town, back into town. Hey, do me a favor. And Sunny wants Trudy? me to go and visit Trudy, which is fine because that's when you get the experience points. So I'll definitely be doing that. While I'm here, I'm just going to swing by the uh, schoolhouse, primarily just to uh, do the unlock the safe. And the reason I want to unlock the safe is primarily for the experience points and also for uh, the stealth boy and a super stim pack because that's pretty useful. But after that, I'm just getting out of here straight away. And Joe Cobb is yelling at Trudy and I'm standing on the bar. But that's fine, no one seems to mind. He's standing on the bar. Hello, Trudy. Well, you've been causing quite a stir. And there's my 50 experience points to take me over into level two. I'm just going to go through her dialogue tree to uh, start off the Ringo question. Sure. I'm also going to fix her radio quickly, so I'll just do that. And uh, now that the uh, caution is off, I get to uh, put up my skills. So, uh, mainly I'm going to be, for my first level, I'm going to be focusing on getting uh, the skills that I need for Ghost Town Gunfight up. So, uh, Barter goes up to 25. Uh, speech is already at 25, so I'm going to push that up to 30, because I'm going to be needing uh, speech is pretty much the score you're going to want to be highest of everything you're doing uh, at any given moment. Uh, medicine is already pretty high, so I'm not going to push that any higher at the moment. Lockpick is already fine. Science is already at 29, which is great. Yeah, I'll just put it. In, I'll just put it into speech. Speech needs to be high, so I'm just going to put it into uh, into speech now. Uh, I wouldn't normally recommend taking Swift Learner at all, because obviously you can just you know kill your way to as much experience as you want in a no kill run uh lack of experience is actually a problem uh so I, i'm actually just going to take one round of swift learner uh on this occasion all right repair the radio i fixed your radio there's 50 bottle caps and using my new barter skill i'll get another 25 and nice thing about uh nice thing about trudy is she will actually uh now buy things from you at uh true value 
uh, she, there is no discount whatsoever. There's only uh, there's actually not many people who do this, so it is worth uh, if you do have anything to sell, uh, selling them here. Uh, definitely, she if she has uh, take the meeting people, uh, meeting people, salesman weekly, any other skill magazines uh, that increase your non combat abilities are absolutely crucial. Uh, so do take as many of those as you can find. Now I'm going to now quickly. I'm just going to set up Ghost Town Gunfight. Uh, Ghost Town Gunfight, obviously the quest where you help Good Springs fight against the Powder Gangers. Uh, there are a few things to be done. Uh, kick off by going up to Ringo. Ringo points a gun at me. That's uh, very mean, but uh, I'm not an enemy. In fact, I'm, I'm the nicest guy in the entire capital waste. I'm pretty much the only person who won't aggro. So, you know, you'll never meet a nicer person than me. Maybe I can help. Start with. Okay, that kicks off the quest. So, now we head back down to Sunny. And Same. Sunny helps straight away. Trudy is just as easy to Watch convince out. if you have speech or sneak so over 25, which I do. Gang. So I'm going to uh, speech my way to success here. I was planning on sitting this one up. There we go. Now Trudy and the, indeed the rest of the town are on board. Easy Pete is the person I'm going to neglect because you need explosives of 25 to convince him to be on side. And... Uh, yeah, uh, that's kind of, I'm on 11 on account of my build, so I don't really want to invest 14 skill points in something I'll pretty much never use again. You looking to buy some supplies? Nope, I need supplies now to fight the uh, two fight the powder been. gangers. And Barter of 25 will not only bring him on and, uh, side, but he'll give me some leather armor as well as to the rest of the town. So now, leather armor. So I actually have some damage threshold, which is good. Next up is Doc Mitchell, and with a medicine of 30, he will give you some doctor's bags, though even without the medical supplies, uh, even without the uh, the medicine skill check, he will give you some stim packs, so it's definitely worth going to see him, even if you don't have good medical skills. That's all the setup that we're going to do for Ghost Town Gunfight. Uh, I'm not going to start Ghost Town Gunfight uh, just this moment because doing so makes you, I think it's vilified with the uh, with the Powder Gangers so they will shoot you on sight. And I want to go to the prison and do some work with them first. So I'm just going to uh, sleep and now I'm going to head out of town. So that was the first part of our Fallout New Vegas no kill run. Next time we will be heading down towards Prim, clearing out the NCR correctional facility quests and finishing off Good Springs, which does of course involve bringing a pacifist to a gunfight, so be sure to subscribe for that because that will be interesting. Thank you very much and goodbye. I think Cheyenne might have had a bad run in with some enemy early on. I'm slightly worried that Cheyenne has very little help. I really don't want the dog to die. We're going to find a way to get this dog to survive. Okay, here we go. Superior armor. Now is the time. 